we're Chris and Nicole, and this is Kino. We last left you outside of Prince George, battling the heat wave taking over British Columbia. Since then, we've continued cruising down Highway 16 towards the BC-Alberta border and found one of the nicest campsites we have ever stayed at. Hey now, honey, I've been driving around in my car Looking for some kind of open bar It's gonna be alright, gonna be alright Got no money, but I'll work it out with my charm Having a good time and doing no harm It's gonna be alright, gonna be alright Hey now, honey, I've been driving around in my car Looking for some kind of open bar It's gonna be alright, gonna be alright Got no money, but I'll work it out with my charm Having a good time and doing no harm Welcome to paradise. We have found probably the most incredible, beautiful, epic beach in Canada. Where else can you drive your van onto the beach and park up for the night? Have a dog? Barbecue? And beers. I don't think life really gets any better than this. Yeah, you definitely can, you definitely cannot beat this campsite with that sunset back there. We're not leaving. Unreal. No. Yeah, we were only supposed to stay here a night. Uh, we'll see how we're feeling tomorrow. Might be here for a <laughs> week. Happy dog, it's a happy, happy dog. <laughs> Are you enjoying the sun? Is sun tanning out here? And it's pretty skinny the whole way. It only goes like, it's not very wide, but it goes very long. A guy we were talking to yesterday says, when you kind of get to halfway into the middle of the lake, it gets like really, really deep. Mm -hmm. And like the waves get like absolutely huge. Like his 18 foot boat couldn't. And you were saying it. there's like a town at the bottom of the lake. So this used to be just the Columbia River, I believe. It was just like a small little river that flowed through here. And then when they built the Micah Dam, um, it flooded this, uh, this area, so it's two, um, I guess, like, air, like two big reservoirs that like now feed into this. And apparently, somewhere on this lake, I'm not sure where, there's like a mini town at the bottom of the lake. They just like flooded the town. So there's a cafe at the bottom of the lake. And... Yes, yeah, so if you want, if you want uh, lake coffee, go on down there. there ah! Might still be a coffee machine. I think it'd be super cool. Like, if, it seems pretty clear, like where you're not standing. Like, someone could probably scuba dive down there oh, and sure. see. I wonder if anybody's ever done that. It's all sand, so it's, uh, if, if it wasn't so windy today, you'd probably be able to see right down. Now that I'm looking back, I can see all the signs I tried to fill in the cracks that were spreading my mind. I'm so sad to be leaving but I think that has to be hands down our favorite spot we've ever camped. The best. Yeah, that was awesome. I, camp, I never camped like in a van or the trailer or a tent. Like that takes the cake. Absolutely. Sure. Like Banff is beautiful. Like the national parks are beautiful. But it's like why? Like we keep saying, why are all the free spots the most yeah. incredible places? Every every night we're like, wow, that was amazing. Yeah. How is this free? And there wasn't many people there, which was even better. No, there was two campers overnight. Like. Absolutely incredible. I, I think we've found the nicest campground in Canada and probably one of the nicest beaches. Like, I drive back just for this. Now we're off.
off to Jasper, so we'll see you in Jasper National Park. I vaguely remember this place, this exact camping or parking We're spot. We're now, now somewhere that I've actually been before. Welcome to Mount Robson. This is Mount Robson Provincial Park and literally right here because Chris wanted to be funny. Two or three years ago we were out here in the winter in a karma camper van that we had rented from Calgary and we drove out to Mount Robson in the middle of a snowstorm and we took a nap. I think for like four hours yeah. in hopes that the mountain would clear after maybe the storm, cook some Tim Hortons chili or recooked. Re yeah. So now we're back. We couldn't see any mountains around. And we can actually see the mountain this time and it is huge. got a ton of snow a few weeks ago and I think with this melt it's bringing all the rest of the snow down because all the lakes are flooded the rivers are flooded like up onto the roads like this is yeah this, this is, is normally like, parking lot <laughs> like I'm still on pavement right here. my first cross-border experience in the van into Alberta heading into Jasper now so Jasper's like 20 minutes ahead and then we'll go check that out all right yeah Thank you. Welcome to Jasper. Woo! Can't make a stop in Jasper without stopping at the Jasper Brewing Company. Gotta have <laughs> some cold beer on a hot day. And Kino's got some water down there too. Beer and food. She hides underneath the picnic table. <laughs> it's just too hot. 43 degrees today. Kino got bit by another dog on the patio. Oh, it's not bleeding too much anymore. We didn't think it was bleeding at first, but then when we got back to the van, it started coming out a little bit. You okay? You okay, pal pal? Got another one up here by your eye. Yeah. At least you didn't get her eye. Yeah. That'll scab over pretty quick, I think. You okay? And good dogs? Get a greenies. Oh, oh there you are. Good girl, Kino. Yeah. If you've never done the Ice Fields Parkway Drive, it is ranked one of the top 10 most beautiful drives in the world, and it is truly incredible. We've done this drive only in the winter, so it's actually really cool to be able to do it in the summer because normally our drives in the winter are pretty sketchy. Yeah, we'll do it in like half the time. Yeah. Because we're usually having to drive under the speed limit on all the turns and stuff just because the roads are so slippery. I think the last time we came up here, it was a full on whiteout and we couldn't see. It took us about five or six hours. I think the drive normally takes about three. And there's tons of waterfalls to see, lots of really cool viewpoints. So we typically see a fair amount of wildlife as well. And the nice thing is, is we are doing this drive at Golden Hour. So maybe we'll see some bears, yeah. moose, like this elk. If anything, Nicole's going to be the one to spot them, so. Hopefully. So let's take you along on the drive so you can enjoy one of Canada's, or one of the world's most beautiful drives with us. To check out how high the water is here because uh, this is way higher than uh, we've ever seen it before and it's definitely because of all the melt and the, and the heat that's going on here but it's like it almost looks like the top of Niagara Falls over there. Where it sure feels like uh, Niagara Falls. 
I, I think this is like the scale's more than Niagara Falls. Yeah, you're like, you're closer to the water. This is probably triple what you normally would see, the amount of water flowing over this fall. So this section's pretty cool because this is obviously where the water used to flow through. Now you can walk through it. It's just amazing to see how the water kind of carves its way through the rock. Yeah, so normally during the winter months, when we've been here, it's all ice down at the bottom of the falls and you can walk, sorry, pulling the dog. You can walk uh, all the way down to the base of the falls, which is pretty cool. We've been like right into the canyon. It typically freezes except for just a little, little spot spots. where the water goes through, it's so. Pretty cool. And Nicole once again spots the bear on the side of the highway. And in the interest of hitting up all the waterfalls on this road, we'll check out this one too to see how crazy. I can already tell by the sound of it, there's a lot of water going over it. This one is Sunwapta Falls. Sunwapta. Sunwapta. I see him. This guy probably doesn't realize the power of the water in front of him. There's Kino and Nicole. Playing in the water. Cool thing about this lake, this is all lake bottom. So I think depending on the water level, the water level probably comes up to almost like right up here. So normally you can drive down on it, but this year they've decided to block it all off, so you have to stay up there. But thanks, Alberta government. <laughs> it's probably probably for, the best. probably for the environment, I'm sure. But yeah, you can see all the tire tracks, and then even over there, you can see the tire tracks continue onto that like island over there. So I think this is just recently filled in. So, but pretty cool. We pulled in last night at like midnight, so we didn't really know what to expect. We were told you could park on the, on the lakefront, kind of like where we were yesterday, but that's okay. That's we're, all right. We're hitting the road now because it's a beautiful day and we're going to meet some friends and bam. <laughs> We were here in the winter, the breeze was freezing, made it almost unbearable to be down here. But on a hot day like this, with this heat wave, this is perfect. perfect. Yeah, you could stay here all day. There's this one spot that we love to hang out. It's called Morant's Curve. Um, the trains come through there, but it's totally sporadic when the trains actually come through. We were driving already past Morant's Curve because we didn't see anything. It's a, it's a train track that curves around a bend with mountains in the background, so. It's just, it's just a really nice picturesque spot. But we were driving down the Vaux Valley and we saw a train and he started moving and he's coming around the corner. So we're on our way to catch a train. All right, made it just in time for the train. He's coming around this way. Most of the time, the photos look great when it's actually coming around the other direction, um, but at the back of the train there's usually a, a locomotive there as well so if you capture a picture of the train heading that way it could look like it's going either direction you really don't know it's like we're not lucky there's no back locomotive so we won't get that shot today but still looks cool but this here is the classic shot of the when the train's coming this direction with a the locomotive there essing through the mountains. So we'll show a picture of what we one that we took last time. So we're off for dinner. We're gonna meet some friends for dinner. We've been hanging out with them, swimming all day, took a little bit of a break. And they're gonna take us to a new 
brewery, I believe. Yeah, and we saw a really funny situation where someone got caught <laughs> with a drone at the uh, at the lake, and you're not allowed to have drones inside the national park. parks. Uh, when we did, when we fly ours, we made sure to fly it outside of the park boundaries. But um, yeah, he confiscated it. It was like a whole hour ordeal of her getting. I'm sure it looked like she was getting written up with the ticket. For she it. definitely got a ticket. We did not. We really wanted to, and we should have because the park board drove past us as we got back to the van. We, he took the van, or so he took her drone and her controller, and he only gave her her phone back that we saw. So we weren't sure if he got her, if she got her drone back. Yeah. Do you know if they yeah. confiscate drones? I don't think they do. I don't think they can, but but I think they get to, or or she'll have to go pick it up at the park office or something. <laughs> All right, we're at the Three Bears Brewery and Pub, and we are hanging out with Sarah and Jordan. Who we joined them and we shot their wedding last year, two and they years ago. two years ago in Banff. They also got married, and then we're at a, a brewery or what is it? It's a, what, it's a, it's a, it's a distillery, right? Yeah, right, just like right around the corner. So this is a pretty cool place, and we are. I'm trying out this beer that they got over there. It's an infused beer between with like uh, IPA with mango. So it's pretty cool. It infuses like as it goes through the tap. So we're trying that out. Hell yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Wondering where Kino is. We're keeping an eye. She's got the air conditioning oh, no, running no, no. inside the van <laughs> and we can see her just hanging out right on the on the bed there. So she's just looking out the window and we know that she's okay. It's really weird as of today in uh, in Alberta. You, it, they're 100% open. There's no masks. Like it was kind of weird. No too. masks in the restaurants, or the stores. <laughs> it was kind of weird that none of the servers had masks. So I, I feel like a rebel. <laughs> yeah, open. So for we summer. figured we figured we'd try it out, but <laughs> carefully. Carefully. 9:47 in Banff. 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 There's basically nobody with masks down here. This is basically early 2020 all over again. That was quite the sunrise. It's amazing how many people are here even at like 4 30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, the temperature has dropped. It's 12 degrees out. So that'll make for a much better day. It's, it, that's a 30 degree change compared to what we've had for the last few days. So yeah. definitely a, a huge change. So if you don't know where we are, we're at Moraine Lake. <laughs> Moraine Lake is one of the most beautiful places. I think it was on the $20 bill but it is one of the most incredible places that you have to check out if you are in the Banff area. Um, it is open the May long weekend to Thanksgiving weekend, otherwise you have to hike in. If you're in the Banff area, check out Moraine Lake. Got you a cookie. Oh, Kino's getting spoiled. Now she's gonna lick that for like an hour as she tries to figure out what it is. Going on a hike. We're going to the Black 
shale suspension bridge, I think. That's what it's called. It's not the natural bridge, I thought, or is no. it? Or? No, no it's the not. natural bridge is in Yoho. Oh, okay. We're in Kananaska. Today we say goodbye to the mountains. They're very hazy today everywhere we've been going though. Once we kind of went around a corner, they all started becoming very hazy, which we're not sure. In some spots, it kind of almost looks like smoke, maybe from the forest fires, but. I'm sad. <laughs> it's kind of like, it's like our destination was the mountains. So it's like we're leaving, but we still have a bit of a trip back going to Drum Valley next. I know. Every trip. Where we want to go? Mountains. Mountains. Mountains.